Okay, this is the uh, silicon controller that uh, sits inside a Philips Hue LED light bulb. In my last video I tore down uh, this uh, bulb uh, and inside it I found the controller circuit board and this uh, black rectangle on the bottom of the board uh, is the actual controller for the light bulb. It has the RF interface uh, and the microprocessor. Uh, if you take this thing off the board and de-encapsulate it, which basically means getting rid of that black epoxy, you can actually get a, uh, the actual die out and you take this photograph. And uh, just stunning. It's a really great uh, demonstration of how complicated the Philips Hue bulb is in terms of its functionality. Uh, this is a full-blown microcontroller. It's got an RF section. Uh, it's got some flash storage for permanent. It's got some RAM for temporary storage. Uh, it has some analog voltage regulators. It's got a clock generator. It's, I think it even has some analog functions that are left over for another function probably not used by this bulb. Um, you're looking at a really capable microcontroller here. And the real story, of course, is now you're seeing a lot of integration of RF into uh, even some really inexpensive products. Let's uh, see if we can uh, take a look at some of the more interesting bits on this die. Let's start out in the left side, uh, those octagons. Uh, they're inductors uh, or transformers. Um, that's almost always the easiest way of figuring out if there's an RF function uh, on a semiconductor is to look for these uh, because they're a necessary component con to constructing uh, an RF uh, part of a uh, design. The uh, pads there going off uh, are the uh, at connections to the antenna. Uh, it is a transmit and receive on the antenna, so there's going to be a diplexer here basically which separates the uh, receive and transmit. Uh, almost certainly that's what's going on with some of these inductors uh, or transformers. Uh, they're separating signals out uh, so each function can uh, drive or receive as appropriate. Uh, let's see, just above that, some analog functions. Uh, I think that's probably uh, some of the uh, ADD converters in the, the parallel I.O. Uh, up on the um, upper right side, we can scroll over to find uh, the clock generator analog function, I believe. Uh, scrolling down here, we can see what's in the bottom is random logic, basically all the connections uh, between all the circuitry to achieve this chip. Um, scrolling down to the uh, lower left, we can see or see I'm pretty sure that's the flash EEPROM, basically stores the permanent program. Uh, on the right side, I think, is the RAM. Uh, not entirely sure, I must admit. Uh, let's see other things. Let's zoom all the way back out uh, and let's zoom over to the uh, upper right. Uh, there's a connection to some pads here, and uh, those little uh, uh, what reddish wires essentially are connecting a pad. They're running right across. It's very three dimensional when you look at an integrated circuit, you think in 3Ds. Uh, they're racing across about 16 lines over to the random logic. So there's probably something the chip designer needed to connect, but they had this big block of uh, RAM in the way. Uh, let's see, some uh, pretty photographs, uh, some die marks. It looks like a bird, actually. Uh, I don't know if that's just a hidden Easter egg. Sometimes people do that, or if it's actually a sketch from the uh, company which designed it. Anyway, so let's just zoom back out. Isn't it astonishing? That's a uh, penny's worth of technology, actually, now that uh, mankind's gotten phenomenally good manufacturing incredibly complex parts for very little money uh, and that's of course the enabler here of the Internet of Things and really what's uh, making things like Philips Hue possible. Um, let's see let's slide another slide in here actually because I also had a comment in my video and uh, someone asked said well geez um, how does that compare to the uh, uh, pre-connected bulb. Um, a whole bunch of little black boxes here the two uh, leftmost dots are basically the uh, parts that come out of the controller for the pre-connected uh, this one here, let me just insert this microphotograph, is the microcontroller. And this one here actually is the RF section. So Cree actually had to put uh, two bits of semiconductors together into a single package. Uh, and uh, Philips has a slightly more sophisticated approach with a, a, a single die a, a design. I know to be fair, the Philips bulb I believe is a bit newer than the Cree Connected. What's also really interesting to me uh, is that the uh, Cree Connected is an ARM 32-bit uh, uh, M0, which is a tremendous processor. And the Philips uses the AVR, which is an 8-bit processor. And I was kind of expecting the Philips die to be actually a bit smaller because of that. But uh, you can actually see uh, they're actually probably almost equivalent in terms of area. Once you combine these two rectangles together, uh, you end up with the same circuitry. So there you go. A world of technology in all these Zigbee bulbs. All right. Well, if you'd like to take a look uh, at the die in more detail, uh, this is the link to my Flickr album. Uh, I'll also put the link into the description of the video if you'd like to click on it. Uh, you can see the actual uh, photographs. Uh, they're actually mosaics. They're uh, stitched together from uh, about 40 photographs to create a, a typical die photograph of this size. So, hope you found that interesting. I certainly did. Lots of interesting things going on here in this uh, Philips Hue bulb and a real demonstration of uh, how the Internet of Things is actually being enabled.